Thanks, Tofik. I am monitoring the YouTube chat to see if there are any questions there. Uh, I have one question. Uh, do you have uh, any examples of uh, scripts or automation which you know which people can use to let's say monitor the APIs, right? To make sure that people are being used. Is there any examples of automation? Uh, um, so I think what we've done is actually we build like a custom platform, uh, uh, and that custom platform uh, essentially has these kind of uh, checks in place. When I say custom platforms, honestly speaking, it's just a bunch of collection of script that you know before you ingest anything into uh, things like you know Elk or database or a Splunk or you know anywhere else, it will essentially look for regular expression pattern matches. And if it meets that pattern matches, it will automatically mask the information before it records it. But yeah, I think I can I can give you some more examples on my slide uh, before I publish them. Sure. Any questions from the panelists on Zoom? There's no questions on the YouTube chat at least yet. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Devangana, do you want to take it forward? Sure, Rajat. Uh, thank you. Um, so yeah, I think over the next 15, 20 minutes, what we're going to do is uh, we have a couple of panelists here today with us who are going to uh, discuss their point of views and share their knowledge on um, their experiences in the space of privacy by design. Um, so we will continue with Tofik on our panel. Uh, he is a principal cybersecurity engineer at Emirates Group. Uh, we also have Samir with us today, uh, who is the co-founder of Arca um, and comes with a, a lot of experience in the data security and privacy space. Um, and we also have uh, Satya, uh, from, who is a senior solution engineer at uh, Akamai. So they are going to be our panelists for today's discussion. Um, so I would probably start with one question for all the panelists here, and this is perhaps just a continuation of uh, what Taufik was mentioning in his presentation, uh, which is around trust, but always verify. Uh, one of the uh, one of the things that I have seen uh, in terms of a big struggle with implementing privacy by design is that they, they, there are a lot of commercial off the uh, off the shelf, uh, you know, sh uh, softwares and tools and technologies that are being used everywhere in organizations. Especially when we start looking at the fields of data science and uh, engineering and analytics, etc. Um, and that brings in a big challenge because, um, to Tofik's earlier point, a lot of times we know uh, what we know and what is in our control, but not what is not in our control. And in this case, these would be the Scots solution. Um, and a lot of times the uh, choice on the Scots solution is not made, uh, like the due diligence doesn't sort of incorporate um, all the different factors, including privacy by design. Sometimes they are made uh, in terms of a specific problem that we want to address or a specific area that we want to address. So my question for the panelists would be that uh, one, um, have you encountered those situations wherein you have come across some of the court's uh, solutions in implementation um, and you had to sort of retrospectively uh, look at how to address some of the privacy issues that they bring about. Um, maybe we, uh, we can start with Taufik um, because you were just sort of sharing your point of view Taufik and then go to the other panelists. Um, absolutely. Thanks. I think, I think your question is really valid. And I think this is a question that we asked ourselves back in the day when we started this whole, you know, privacy by design initiative. Um, I think out of experience, we've come up with this process that we like to call as data privacy impact assessments. Um, what we do as a part of this process is that every time you engage with a new partner or a new supplier or with a different team, um, you come up with all the data that is going to be exchanged at the time of development or during the life cycle of the product itself. You catalog all of that data. And once you've cataloged them, you agree what kind of technical controls are going to be implemented. And then as a part of your development process towards the end, you go back and want to validate if those technical controls um, are implemented in the way that they were meant to. Now, there are challenges with systems that were already designed. So you have to do a lot of retro work, but you can always begin and then eventually, you know, move in the direction where 
all of this data is identified right up front as a part of your data privacy impact assessments okay that i think that's a very interesting point um i would maybe uh, samir can you share your point of view on this yeah okay so uh I mean, we have seen this happening uh, across uh, courts. I would not want to go into the product development part of it because that's a easier one to tackle. But when it comes to courts, uh, this is a situation that we have seen happening every time. And uh, when you look at privacy by design and trying to implement, there are really three facets to uh, a privacy by design. Uh, facet one is where you're looking at saying, is this a situation where I need to deploy contracts to be able to take care of it? Facet B, uh, you're looking at is saying, can I build wrappers around uh, the cards so that I'm able to filter and manage their uh, uh, data sharing and their connections and all. And the third part is uh, when you really look at the technology and say that, okay, can I force the cards guy to go back and redo certain parts of it so that I'm able to take care of it. Uh, so, so long as contractually with the cards guys, you're kind of uh, making sure that uh, they take care of privacy uh, in line with whatever you want, you're still a lot in a lot of ways protected. And uh, many of the contractual decisions is via what uh, law says or even what Tofik was saying is a privacy impact assessment. Uh, which which is similar to what you would do like a security impact, but you would go a lot deeper in terms of looking at saying what is the kind of personal data and all that that is coming in. Uh, then you can also look at a lot of wrappers that you can build around. Uh, wrappers are, uh, to my mind, smaller software libraries, which would allow you to filter the kind of data inputs that are going in and also build access restrictions in terms of the data output that is likely to be shared with somebody else. And then as a last part, you go into the monitoring and you get into data minimization and what else you want to do and all. So these are the three facets when specifically when it comes to courts. Uh, if of course I'm going to go out into development, there is a whole different layer of framework that you need to get building on from both the uh, non-tech as well as the tech perspective as well. Thank you, Samir. I, I think you, you brought up uh, the focus on two very important aspects that we typically um, look at uh, when we are doing software development. And I think those are considered as, as part of you know, your NFRs when you're building a good platform, an evolutionary platform. Um, and they would be merit in bringing them in, into the uh, data security and privacy world as well, which is extensibility and um, as a collective, perhaps if we, as a collective in the industry, if we could push back on some of the courts that do not sort of adhere to the privacy by design um, aspects, then um, you know that force would at least um, um, you know ensure that they actually go back and take it seriously, right? So this is going to be perhaps an outcome of the collective rather than of individual organizations. Absolutely. Um, Satya, do you have anything to share on from your side on this? Yeah, so um, in my opinion, I think uh, the way Taufik sort of uh, laid it out, it actually makes a lot of sense. If you have, whenever you're building a product, if your design teams and your development teams take care of privacy at the very beginning, uh, that's your best case scenario. But I think even Samir and you've pointed out that in a lot of situations, businesses typically, you know, buy off the shelf components. And, and it's very hard to sort of build a lot of these systems ground up. Um, the other thing that's happening is a lot of uh, businesses are also, you know, now being forced to consider privacy. It's, it's not by choice, but, you know, because of regulations, GDPR, we have PDP on the way. So there are some, um, you know, market impetus, which is sort of pushing that agenda forward, which is a very good thing. Um, so I think a little bit of awareness, uh, you know, overall in the ecosystem um, would would go a long way. Uh, understanding the basics of what is encryption, uh, where is the content encrypted? I mean, uh, encryption is, um, you know, often uh, a term that's thrown around, but it's important to understand whether the content is encrypted at rest or, you know, when it's in transit, uh, what is it? 
you know what does it exactly mean and how does it impact the workflows another thing that often goes uh, unnoticed i think topic touched upon this and it's very critical is um, if you have content on the browser there is no way you can actually hide it from uh, a person who is using the browser uh, browser tools these days you can just right click inspect the traffic uh, that that goes a long way but a lot of it is actually true for apps and other ecosystems so in general as long as you know you assume that your clients are compromised that goes in a long way both in terms of security as well as you know in, in a lot of cases privacy by extension so i think uh, businesses today are grappling with you know how to deal with privacy given the fact that traditionally privacy essentially were a few compliance check boxes which were not the focus and it's it's hard to sort of justify at least you know in terms of dollars irrespective of the size of the company right if if you're a large company it's it's easy to justify uh, the damage to reputation brand and, and all that sort of stuff but if you're a small company small organization uh, that's an investment you're making up front it's sort of difficult to justify the cost um, i think that's where the collective effort in sort of driving some of these best practices uh, a change in mindset will go a long way very valid points out there thank you for sharing that so if i were to just quickly summarize what you three just talked about is um, i think one very um, uh, important and very concrete step that the organizations can take away right uh, can take right away is having a data privacy assessment framework that can be used whenever they are building a solution or are buying a off the shelf cot solution um, and that goes goes a long way because even though that um, data privacy assessment framework uh, may not be complete but uh, there is a starting point and over time some of the feedbacks could be incorporated into uh, into you know adding more elements to this framework um, there are certain aspects that sami talked about which is around looking at what kind of contracts do you have around data with the solution that you're buying um, is that is, is the solution extensible um, and what kind of um, uh push you can have on the cot solution provider to go back and fix some of the security and privacy privacy issues that they might arrive at um and one key point that you just mentioned satya was um look at worst case scenarios and uh, sort of start from there because that sort of uh, helps you understand what kind of uh, risk you are running into um in case something were to go wrong um so i guess um you know that's going to be helpful for a lot of organization and as well as technologists we could work collectively to build some of these assessments or rather expose some of the vulnerabilities that come with uh, some um, very popular cot solution um, so that the industry as such becomes aware of it and the collective can drive um, our larger push towards privacy by design uh this other question that i had and i think um uh topic covered this in his presentation as well which is the uh, balance between convenience and balance between uh, privacy um balance between convenience and privacy essentially uh now when we are starting with greenfield project sometimes it is easier to look at uh, privacy by design as the first class citizen if you have the right person in the room or the right intent in the room uh it becomes extremely difficult when you have an existing platform or a product um and you have to go back and fix some of the issues in there and i think we all saw this happening when gdpr was rolled out because a lot of people had to um you know unhappily let go of some of the analytics and and data science driven features that they were providing to the customers so uh, could you all share your um point of view on um on how could an organization start looking at this balance and you know perhaps let go of some of the key drivers of their business especially around data science and analytics um satya would you want to go first sure so um i think in, in my opinion right um uh, in, in general um the regulations on privacy and 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 i just want to make the distinction that i'm specifically talking only about the regulation part of it um if you look at it for the growth of any 
product or industry that, that you're looking at, regulations are probably your worst nightmare because um, you know that there's a lot of information that you can collect. And today, if uh, any product, uh, you, you can pick a vertical and you're likely to see some amount of personalization and some amount of recommendation or uh, advanced techniques on AIML being used. Um, all of this needs data to sort of bring out those recommendations, get you the next link that you're most likely going to click on, or even make the right recommendations on you know, a product fit or what's important to your business. All of that requires data and regulations specifically are going to hamper it. I think it's a given. Uh, organizations are and are likely, you know, even going forward, will sort of um, always struggle when you're when when a new feature is being released. I, I think what's important is uh, again a, a baseline uh, where you know you or uh, every every uh, uh, product owner and and companies know that okay a new feature is going to be rolled out and if it needs a new piece of data the adoption is going to be very slow and it's not going to be uh, as fast as you know the size of your user base that's critical and fundamentally it's a change in mindset it essentially means that tomorrow if you're rolling out a feature it's not going to be accessible to all of your users till they accept you know uh, uh, sharing that data with you or you know if, if it if a person sharing his data pretty much drives another person's ability to see a feature, then you're going to see very slow rollouts. So that's a new sort of expectation. And we'll see that sort of evolve over time. And it really, you know, that's where the regulations sort of come in. Unless there are financial penalties, I don't think, uh, you know, uh, uh, organizations will be adhering very strictly to it. There will be creative ways and we'll sort of work around, you know, the limitations on the of each of the regulations of the land to sort of speed up the development, bring faster time to market for whatever the products are. So it'll be an interesting space and we love to see, we know how GDPR is uh, sort of evolved. It'll be interesting to see, you know, when PDP comes and uh, whatever updates to the regulation bills that a lot of countries are, you know, in the process of rolling out. Uh, we'll have to see how all of that sort of plays out. I, I like the skepticism that you have here. And I think perhaps that might be the way to go forward that maybe as a tech community, we, we drive some of this because um, organizations are never going to adhere 100% to these because one, there'll always be creative ways of working around it. And two, um, you know, as long as it keeps conflicting with the commercial goals, um, you know, this will never become a first class citizen. Um, so I think definitely working with skepticism is definitely going to uh, help there. Um, Tafik Samir, um, would you want to share your your um, point of view on that? Um, I think there are two important aspects to this question, right? One is, where do you want to draw the line? And the other bit is what is your risk appetite? Now, what I mean here is that at least for us having operated or operating businesses across multiple geographies, um, you want to be able to add a dollar value to say that what if you lose business from a given geography due to privacy related requirements. For example, if you know my business is very, very active in Europe, and if I have massive penalties and 80% of my user base comes from there, um, I need to sit back and take a call of, you know, whether I want to prioritize feature over, you know, privacy control. And I think helping businesses make educated decisions using proper data, I think drives a lot of changes as opposed to taking a regulatory framework and trying to fit your system into that framework. So, I think the way we've tried, and as you mentioned in your question that, you know, it's very difficult to implement systems, implement privacy in systems that have been, you know, built over a period of 30, 40 years. Um, I think the only way you could address that problem, it doesn't necessarily address, but it gives you a start is to have like a data privacy office that essentially has representation from different parts 
of your organization which is something that i mentioned on my last slide um, the reason we saw an advantage in doing that is because it's not about what the cyber security team says versus what the development team thinks versus what the business thinks it's everyone giving their point of view and as a result trying to then choose what's the balance approach in terms of going forward so that's that's one approach that we've taken to solve the problem but yes it's extremely difficult and you will never be able to 100% say that your system is compliant to you know all the privacy by design principles okay you, i i have a slightly different take on the whole uh, convenience part so when you say you can either have privacy or convenience and not both is actually incorrect because uh, that's a phase that comes for security but not really privacy privacy is a way of life so as an organization if i say that i want to embrace privacy and take whatever it comes to build a business model then you have embraced privacy and you're going to find ways and means to ensure that your ecosystem your suppliers vendors the internal governance and all that uh, kind of works with you to make sure that the privacy is built in. Uh, of course there are legacy systems which pose its own set of uh, hindrances to building privacy but it is not that it is insurmountable like i said before we worked with people where they built wrappers and we've kind of taken care of it and uh, at least systems newer uh, that are uh, built in the last 5 10 years even if they are using the latest technology and all for those it's a matter of the organization looking at saying okay to what extent i'm going to implement privacy and then the tech community is able to build a lot of privacy controls uh, within the entire piece not that it will happen overnight and i don't think the law is ever saying that it's going to happen overnight but uh, it's not that it is insurmountable as well uh, it's also not something that you need to you know uh, try to do a uh, conflict or try to do a, a trade off between convenience and privacy uh, it's not uh, required really because uh, i don't think there is any end user or even us as end users would be happy to share data if the privacy practices are being met so it really is not a inconvenience uh, and going by the way uh, as tech uh, everybody of us looks back at practices uh, pra uh, done by others Uh, the challenge is even more easier because now that you know that there are certain companies who are able to do it better i would rather have a community working with them and towards them rather than anything and in fact for the whole privacy by design whether you are doing it for legacy or uh, built some time back or you kind of just starting out now we already are building frameworks we have implemented at places as well and uh, we would uh, open it for community as well uh, if you are able to get more contributors nothing like it because all of us will be able to drive and take care of the whole uh, privacy by design not design you know, uh, an example that i can give is uh, the inconvenience actually is more for tech because there was a time earlier when uh, for building a mobile application we could just simply list all the permissions and say the mobile app needs to have all the permissions without bothering whether i really need the permission or not today the ecosystem which is people like google and apple are forcing back and saying no you need to tell us why you need that apple your permission and i will enable that permission for you as part of the ecosystem only when you really need it not otherwise so only when i want to access photos i will get a photos permission when i want to add, take a photo i will get a camera permission so this is more uh, convenience portion that is coming towards us rather than the end consumer and we need to embrace this i don't think there is anything wrong with it because it affects all of us we also have to look at saying whatever we build if it does not have the right practices is also going to impact us so therefore it's not really an inconvenience i would say it's a way of life you either take it or you can choose to ignore and work around it so there are some very important points that you brought up here and it gives me a perfect segue into my next question which is uh you know uh, uh, earlier privacy by design would be a conversation topic for perhaps the security professionals but um it does um ask for uh, a more interdisciplinary or a more cross functional uh, involvement from teams and different kind of leadership 
Um, you just brought up the point around organizational values, Samir. Um, um, I guess when you were mentioning that, you know, privacy is the way of life and you have to decide whether you embrace that, that fact or you essentially completely ignore it and still end up building your business, uh, you know, around it um, or against it. Um, so I think perhaps at this point, everyone would, um, uh, would agree that we do need to take it as, uh, uh, as something where you need interdisciplinary involvement, whether this is from the organizational um, leadership, uh, your legal teams, developers, security teams, data scientists. I would even say it perhaps goes uh, even extended to you know the UX community who's involved in building uh, these systems. Uh, I think that's perhaps sort of um, uh, agreed by somebody, but have you uh, seen instances in your um, life, in your career of uh, organizations who have really embraced it and they have benefited from it? Um, I guess um, we could talk about where things might have gone wrong, but uh, we, all of us, we have very few uh, positive stories to look at. So if, if there is any story that you would like to share from your experience. Sure, sure. So about, uh, you know, five, six years back when the whole privacy thing was started, uh, we started working on it within India. Uh, the initial uh, discussions were all with security folks because it was more because security folks and tech guys are looking at it saying, okay, it's going to come someday, it's going to impact me, so I might as well be prepared for it. And uh, we had to force ourselves to go till business or to go tell product managers uh, and tell them that, hey, you know, this is really your problem. Uh, and it's not really a security problem because uh, privacy is going to be much, much bigger and much more than security. Uh, at least now, I think uh, in the last uh, two years, I'm happy to say that uh, uh, companies have, uh, the discussions have started coming from uh, either boards or the CEOs or the uh, you know, uh, the sales guys, uh, the marketing managers or the product managers and all. And uh, while, yes, it gets deferred to uh, the CISO, the tech community and all from an implementation point of view, a lot of decisions have started coming from there. Uh, we've also seen now, uh, I mean, we work with the uh, private equity, we see the investors community as well. And quite a lot of them now have started engaging with us uh, saying, we want you as part of the due diligence to check for how these guys are maintaining uh, privacy and uh, security within the system as well. So uh, that is now becoming a live thing where uh, everybody uh, with the community is also looking at saying, how are you uh, going to take care of uh, privacy? And do you have any practices? Do I need to build something or not? So uh, it's a very positive spin uh, because uh, one thing we have seen for sure uh, when business takes a stand and says, yeah, I want privacy, a lot of work is easier uh, for the implementation side of things <clears throat> because you don't really then need to go back and convince. And uh, there is now, uh, I think most of the uh, uh, larger organizations that we have seen and even smaller ones that we work with, have come to the realization and in the last uh, six months have actually started forming a lot of uh, teams where uh, multiple facets of the organization come together, uh, be it legal, we have in fact included, seen even finance being included, uh, then the physical security part of it being included, uh, you have the marketing sales and the operations and all coming in to have their chip in to say that, hey, you know, uh, I'm going in uh, privacy is there. The regulation is there. I have to work with it. And so therefore, what is my input going to be in this? So uh, I see a lot of positivity that is uh, available around and that is uh, coming around. There's a lot of realization also. And uh, I think uh, thanks to the whole Cambridge Analytica scandal and uh, the amount of media movement that was happening, uh, privacy became mainstream. Uh, at a much faster pace uh, with business than what security has been able to do for quite some time. Because uh, privacy is now not just linked to uh, the uh, regulation, but a lot of people realize it is linked to reputation. Uh, most consumers surveyed have actually gone back and said that if your privacy practice is not great, I simply don't want to work with you. And uh, they've seen the impacts of uh, hash WhatsApp, hash delete Facebook, 
has delete this has delete that uh, working uh, which as a cancel campaign has served to increase uh, and improve the momentum overall yeah at the yeah then i'm i'm done right uh, and and i think what he just shared is is uh, you know quite heartening to hear uh, and so thank you for sharing that samir uh tofik satya do you have any stories that you want to contribute um well i think yes uh, i would agree to what samir was saying all this while that you know i think there is a lot of change in the last two or three years from a privacy point of view and there is a reason for it probably is because privacy back in the day was always looked upon to cyber security or security professionals but today privacy is much more beyond that right and as a result the businesses do want to consider they want to they do want to come on the table and have these conversations to be able to facilitate you know privacy related requirements as and when you know they are developing either new features or they are developing i think you know new systems so i would i would say that i have seen a positive spin at least where i work where now it's not just about cyber security standing up or attribution saying that oh if this is privacy there are issues in privacy that have security impact but not every issue every privacy issue is security related and as a result it's very important to socialize and get different people across the different organizations to come together talk about it and as a result have a positive outcome of you know privacy by design discussions right i think it's a very important point you brought up which is privacy is not equal to security and they um, sort of you know um, have to be looked at as two separate entities um which might have overlap but it is not uh, exactly equal um satya uh, anything that you would want to add i i think uh, i'll i'll just stress on two things uh, so uh, between samir and tofik i think uh, the point that samir made that um, brand reputation is important today and uh, there's a lot of at least heat on the social media if there's either a breach in privacy or privacy or security right that i think that's one of um, it's it's a new phenomena and it's it's critical to sort of speed up the entire adoption of privacy guidelines or even security best practices um in some case it's it's a mix of both and it's hard to tell between the two um the other thing um you know that the topic was um, talking about earlier um sometimes <clears throat> it's it's uh, been difficult uh, you know to sort of adopt um and the point that samir was saying that it's it's not about how difficult or easy it is it's about the mindset of the organization i think fundamentally all of these are shifts in the attitudes we'll have to you know see how it uh, plays out a lot of the power sort of goes to the consumers of uh, a lot of the products i i would say um if they force all of these products to adhere to privacy or there's a regulatory framework sort of pushing them towards it it's just going to accelerate the process because at the end of the day i think all of the most organizations are there um, you know to to make profit so there has to be you know something that sort of pushes you in a direction which whatever it may be sort of hinders either the pace at which you can move forward or you know um, eats a little bit more of effort uh, towards your goal so i'll i'll just uh, round up with that i love that point that there and i think what what you are essentially um uh, pointing at is you know consumers uh, us as consumers used to be uh, you know we, we used to be actual consumers of technology but uh, to a large extent now we have become the drivers of technology as well um so i think there's a lot more power that has not a lot more power that has come in consumers hands now in order to drive some of these shifts in in technology world um and and specifically in the world of privacy as we are talking right now um i see that the audience doesn't have any questions but uh, does anyone in the panel um or um or rajat zena do you have any questions 
so i would uh, like to make one point here and also i think this is something that i wanted to understand from taufik also uh, that uh, you know taufik you mentioned a lot about uh, the tokens and anonymization and encryption and all that that comes in uh, and there is a lot of additional uh, uh, you know quality review and all that that needs to be done but uh, if i were to understand correctly you were coming from the perspective of uh, security and uh, there is a security leakage and therefore uh, because it contains personal identifiable information there is a privacy leakage as well uh, whereas when you look at a privacy by design or a privacy leakage there would be a lot more than that also and that's something that as a framework that uh, we are working on so is there something uh, in your organization and all that you have seen happening or is there something there's a movement that you have seen around which uh, we can work together on because i believe as a community tech has to drive this and unless everybody in different languages and different systems come together will not be able to push this forward across it will become a uh, it will remain like a security issue not really a privacy issue um right samir so i think with our experience implementing or going through this process what we have realized is that although there is a lot of overlap between uh, security issues and privacy related issues meaning you know because there is a personally identifiable you know token um, it's a security issue but it has privacy implications so what we have realized is to be able to define a set of controls that have security implications and that only have privacy implications because the audience that deals with the solutions to both these problems may be distinctly different so for example if it's a security issue that leads or has implications of privacy then you have a set of team that will come or an agile or a small team that comes forward and then decides the way forward versus something that is purely you know uh, privacy privacy uh, oriented is when you have another set of audience that comes forward and decides the way forward so i think it's very use case uh, driven uh, depending on you know what situation you are in sure makes sense yep i mean that's what we have also observed so even things like i was not able to fulfill rights becomes really a privacy issue whereas an actual data leakage becomes a security plus privacy issue correct so the other example that i could potentially give you is around gdpr you have uh, uh, gdpr has this provision where a user can request uh, deleting all the data that is present uh, you know or the enterprise holds about that particular user yes. now that's again more privacy driven but if you were really to be able to delete information about all of that for that particular user you also need to know how many systems are cataloging that data as of today for you okay. and that is where you know that security part comes in where you are saying that let's not record what we don't need or let's mask the information and as a result that sort of rolls up at a point where the business is fairly confident that if ever somebody raises the request to delete the data i know that it will get deleted and it will not be present in any part of my you know ecosystem so the gdpr uh, thing has also now changed to say that it will become a right to forget and which means if regulatory wise if i need to retain something it retains plus uh, they have also added to say even masked information should be removed so the moment you know where your masked information is uh, potentially you are opening up to saying that i can unmask and therefore the privacy is gone so it's become a very touch and go situation in that yeah i think it's i i fully agree with you i think it's also very complicated when there are multiple regulatory frameworks yes. that uh, you know have a different way to look at uh, you know user data let alone security or privacy aspects for it for example you know you in case of hipaa you want to hold the information for 10 years even after a particular treatment was done and closed yes. but if you then apply privacy regulations on top of it it becomes difficult for you to retrieve that patient information if you you know align to all the privacy requirements correct 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 so that is why i mean multidisciplinary comes in uh, to decide uh, but there is this whole set of security also which is required to contribute in the entire thing 
it's just that i mean off led we are seeing that security is not really driving the entire discussion till the end uh, maybe one of the initiators and then a major contributor but uh, increasingly uh, we are seeing tech and primarily because all the uh, economies are moving towards tech and especially in the current covid era everybody is kind of looking at digital so it's tech who is going to be the primary driver uh for each and each facet of tech is going to come in like whether it is ai ml or a warehouse situation or anything anything that has data in it uh, uh, we will have to look at a filter in between which says hey are you going to imbibe personal data and if you are then these are the additional things you need to definitely do types yeah and i think i think that's that's what you can do pretty much on an ongoing basis i think you know as you keep doing it over the time you will see that your systems are far more aligned uh, to the overall goal but at the same time you know the businesses do run their operations as smoothly as possible given the you know guardrails around these uh, regulatory frameworks absolutely hey thanks devangana for letting me ask the question sorry i took up a little more time i guess no worries at all samir i think this was important and um, you know these are the questions that all of us uh, keep coming across uh, in our day to day life so i think this discussion was certainly helpful um i know that we are um uh, over time um so i guess any questions that uh, the audience might have or anyone might have uh, they can reach out to you know or any of you three or all of you three um to get those clarifications um rajat jena uh, do you have any closing thoughts uh no thanks evangana for moderating this session um uh, for those of you who are watching uh, the videos of these sessions will be uploaded uh, and processed uh, by about next week on hasgeek.com/fifthelephant and um, if you have suggestions for topics uh, please do leave them in the comment section on hasgeek.com/fifthelephant we'll be happy to consider and if you would like to speak please reach out to us we are looking for interesting case studies on data governance and on various aspects of um, of engineering for compliance uh, that's all we have for today uh, thank you very much uh, thank you to all the panelists to tawfiq for taking the time out to do this presentation and to devangana and rajat for being so supportive uh, in getting this initiative together um thank you everyone thank you, thank you. everyone bye bye bye